Well, we're just over a month away from the kickoff of the FIFA Men's World Cup, but before Qatar hosts that, it is staging the Street Child World Cup. It's an event that brings together hundreds of children from around the globe. They're described as street-connected children, taking part not only in a football tournament, but also they're here to have their needs and concerns listened to from a global platform. Earlier on, I spoke to the founder of Street Child United, John Rowe. We say it's more than a game. It's about birth registration and identity access to education, protection from violence and gender equality. You've had this tournament going since 2010 in South Africa. How does this year's tournament compare, do you think? <laughs> it's light years away from the event in South Africa. And we had eight teams then, we've got 28 now. Um, we've never had this many people at an event. This feels like a home World Cup for about 12 different countries, for Pakistan, for Sudan, for Bangladesh, for India. Um, and it's just a fabulous atmosphere around here and all these people are on the side of the street kids. We've got the Philippines playing behind us and there's so many Philippine people here. It feels like the whole of the Philippines community of uh, Qatar is here. And they, they're cheering them on as if they are the Philippines national team at a World Cup. And in terms of tangible benefits and tangible legacy, what, what, are, the, what are the people that are playing here, how are they going to benefit from it, do you think? Bangladesh have just simplified the process of birth registration through pressure from the project to get their kids to this World Cup. The, the, the Supreme Court of Bangladesh have petitioned the government and they've simplified it. The, the Bolivian government have got the president of their Senate at our General Assembly because they've just passed a law to provide birth registrations to, 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 uh, cost free for street children and the 10% of the poorest people in Bolivia. That benefits 800,000 people. So there's real change going on. Laws are being made that are being lobbied by street children. And that is quite amazing in itself. Well, there are inspiring stories everywhere you turn at this Street Child World Cup. Earlier on, I spoke to Jasmine Akhtar, who grew up in a refugee camp in Bangladesh before moving to the United Kingdom. Now, she took part in the 2019 Cricket Street Child World Cup. And she's been telling me about how that event helped turn her life around. If I did not take part in the Street Child Kicker World Cup, I don't think I would be the person I am right now. After I took part, I started to advocate for the gender equality because that is something that I have personally faced being a sport person. Because in an Asian society, there's a stigma that women cannot play sports. I started to play sport when I had nothing, you know? Like, I, had, I was going through depression. I used to lock myself in the room, never used to socialize with anyone never made friends, you know, that this was the stage I was going through. But because of sport, I started to come out of that zone. So now people look at me as a role model, as a young ambassador, where right now, if you look at me, I'm here to help encourage the young ones, you know, to follow their dreams and help them become what they want to do. Well, taking a well-deserved break there during this tournament is the Columbia girls team. And Al Jazeera haven't just been filming the teams while they've been here in Qatar for the tournament itself. They've also been spending some time with the players in their home country.